Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video on instantaneous power due to step function, we will be solving problem number 8 from end of the chapter. Okay, so this is the question. Calculate the power absorbed by the inductor at t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1. And this is the circuit given. So if you look carefully, this is a parallel function. So parallel RLC step function. And the input stern ut means it is a step function. That is, it is 0 before t is equal to 0. And after t is equal to 0, value is 10. So the circuit represents a parallel RLC circuit with forced response. And if you have forgotten, you should go back to article number 9.6, page 351, uh, to, to understand the forced response of a parallel RLC circuit of uh, Mr. Hyatt's book. Okay, now I follow a step for solving parallel uh, RLC circuit and in that the first step is for t less than 0 we have to find the initial conditions that is I0 and V0. Now remember whenever we say I0 it means IL0 and whenever we say V0, that means VC0. So the current through the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, so uh, from here we can see that there was no input before T is equal to 0. So we can just open this. So no input. And since there is no input, no current is flowing in the circuit and so no voltage across the circuit. So we can say that at t is equal to 0 minus or t less than 0, the inductor current IL or IL0 minus is 0 ampere. And similarly, the capacitor current, we are more interested in the capacitor current, so capacitor current, since they are in parallel, therefore the capacitor current and uh, sorry, the capacitor voltage and the inductor voltage are same. So we can write that the inductor voltage is equal to capacitor voltage is equal to 0 volt. Now this is at T less than 0. Now let's find out what happens at immediately T greater than 0. That means the moment we switch this on, the moment this voltage is switched on, we know that the inductor current cannot change instantaneously and also the capacitor voltage cannot change instantaneously. So the moment after it is uh, switched on or the voltage become 10 volts, the current will remain as it was, so it was 0, so it will remain 0, and the voltage will also remain 0, voltage across capacitor. We are interested in that. Okay, the second step is to find di by dt. And we know uh, we, from the book you can see that di by dt is actually V0 over L. So this we have to find its value for t greater than 0. So what we are talking about is actually the transient period. Remember when the voltage is suddenly applied, the capacitor does not charge immediately. So the capacitor voltage gradually increases. So this portion is called the transient period. So we are talking of the transient period. And so now di by dl is equal to v naught over l 
and we have found out from the previous slide that V naught is actually V C is equal to zero for V C zero minus or V C zero plus. Here we are talking of V C plus, so this will also be zero. So the net answer is zero. So this is the second step we found that D I by D T is equal to zero. Now the third step is that we have to calculate alpha, omega naught and then we have to determine the type of damping and alpha is given by this formula for parallel RLC circuit 1 over 2RC and omega naught uh, the frequency is 1 over under root LC this is the critical frequency. So now let's plug in the values, but yes, what is R that we have to find out from the circuit. Just uh, we calculate the Thevenin resistance, we'll have to just follow that. So we have to open the current source if there is any and short circuit the voltage source. So our circuit will become like this, we have sorted the voltage source. So these two resistances are now in parallel, this path and this path. So the equivalent resistance will be 10 parallel 1 and which will be 10 into 1 divided by 10 plus 1 is equal to 10 over 11 ohms. So this is the resistance that value that we'll use in this equation. So 2, the value of the resistance that we calculated and C is 2 farad, so I'll plug in that. Our answer is alpha is 0 0.275. Now let's find out omega, again plugging in the values of inductance and capacitance, it will be 1 radians per second. Now if you recall uh, from the a forced response of a parallel circuit we when alpha is less than omega naught which is this case alpha is less than omega naught then this is a case of a under damped oscillation so this is an under damped case and we'll apply the formula for under damped case okay so we have determined that it is an under damped case and again this is from page 357 uh, for under damped case the natural response is given by e raised to the power minus alpha t and cosine and sine terms where wd is given by under root omega naught square minus alpha square and the complete response is found by the forced response plus natural response. So this is the natural response and we have to find out fourth response. Now when we talk of uh, in terms of current then this will become ILT is equal to I force and I natural and I force we don't know but I natural this is the formula for I natural. So let's find out first of all WD, WD is omega square minus alpha square plugging in the values, so this is the value of WD and we have to now find I final, I final this is also called I infinity. Okay, so to find I final or I infinity, uh, let's see what the behavior of circuit at T is equal to infinity. So we are talking of now this portion where it is a steady state condition now uh, after the transient period that is the final values or infinite period, steady state condition. So now in this case what will happen is that the capacitor is fully charged and it will behave like an open circuit and the inductor will behave like a short circuit. So this is our uh, 
circuit the circuit converted into this at t is equal to infinity or in steady state condition so what is the current okay now there is one more thing since this resistor is bypassed with this short circuit line so therefore no current will flow through this resistor and therefore we can draw the circuit like this that is we eliminate the resistor because no current is flowing through this so now this is the circuit uh, that we have and we have to find the current through the inductor so this is the voltage and uh, one ohm resistor so the current can be found by I L infinity which is also called I final is equal to V over R V is 10 volt and R is 1 ohm so 10 ampere current will flow through the circuit so I L final or I L infinity is 10 ampere so plugging in the value of I F now our equation becomes like this and uh, B1 and B2 are the two unknowns. Others we have found. Alpha we have found. Omega WD or Omega D we have found. So to find B1 and B2, <coughs> we proceed as follows. At T is equal to 0, we plug in and this equation T is equal to 0. So RLT 0 is 10 e raised to the power 0 and beta 1 cos 0 plus beta 2 sin 0 so sin 0 is 0 so this will be eliminated i l 0 we have found out is to be 0 so we plug in this 10 and plus b1 from here and therefore b1 is equal to minus 10a now we find out di by dt so from here if you differentiate this with respect to t we will get this value this is just two functions first function and second function so first function differentiation of the second function this one and plus second function this function differentiation of the first function so this will become minus e raised to the power minus alpha t and then we again plug in the value of t is equal to 0 in this so this will become 1 sign term will become 0 this will become also 1 cos 0 and like this now we have earlier found out that di by dt or di l by dt is equal to 0 so we will plug in this value here so we plug in the value of 0 and this term on the right is wd b2 minus a b1 and we have found out the value of b1 from here so we plug in that value and so we can find b2 to be 0 point uh, minus 2.86 ampere so we found out the values of b1 and b2 this way and now we plug in we have these four values so we'll plug in into this so plug in all the values that we have so this is our final equation for uh, inductor current at any time t and now we have to find the power so we know the power across inductors will be the voltage across and multiplied by current and the voltage we know is LDI DT so this is LDI DT voltage across the inductor multiplied by the current and this can be written as L and then the current LDI DT now 
at t is equal to 0, pl0 will become equal to 0 because il is 0. So, il is 0. Also, di by dt is also 0. So both the terms are 0 at t is equal to 0. Therefore, the power will become 0 watt. Now, this Okay, now let's find the power at t is equal to 1 second. So we'll again use the formula where now t is equal to 1. So first of all let's find the current IL. So IL t in that we put t is equal to 1, t is equal to 1, t is equal to 1, t is equal to 1 and the values. And after solving the answer is 3 point. 878 ampere. Now let's find out di dt at t is equal to 1. So this was the equation at t is equal to 1 again we replace all the t's by 1 and now plugging in the values that we already know alpha we know is 0 0.275 wd this is the value of WD, beta 1 is minus 10 and sine WD or omega D actually. So plug again all the values and then calculating, calculating, I hope you can follow the steps. So DIDT is 6.257 ampere per second. And so now we plug in in the formula, L we know is 0 0.5, the value of I 3.878 from here, and the value of di dt from here 6.25. So the final answer is 12.13 watt. So this is how you find uh, this type of problem. I know it, is, uh, it took longer time. But this basically has combined two problems. One is the solving of the forced response of a parallel circuit and then finding the power. Thank you.